Hey guys, welcome to Parallel Computing Tutorials. I am Abhijit and today we are going to see the scheduling in Parallel Computing using OpenMP. So scheduling in Parallel Computing is basically implemented in OpenMP with the help of a clause called as hash pragma or MP parallel for. So this is a directive which has been used to implement the scheduling actually. So scheduling has been given as a clause to this particular directive. So for what purpose this directive has been used? So this is, a, this is basically a loop construct which specifies that iteration of the loop will be distributed among and executed by encountering team of threads. What that means? If suppose you have a for loop which is consist of uh, 100 iterations. So those number of, so those 100 iterations are divided and given to the set of threads. For that purpose this hash pragma OMP parallel for loop is used. So what is the syntax of this uh, directive? So this is hash pragma OMP for and then you use the clauses. So there are different clauses available in OpenMP and then you can specify your for then you can specify your for loop, normal for loop. These are the clauses which has been used along with hash pragma OMP parallel for which are first private, private, last private in which the number of variables are given as a parameter to these clauses. Then the reduction clause in which you are giving the operator and the list of variables. Then comes the schedule clause which we are going to study today. Then the collapse, order and no wait. So let's get started with the schedule clause. Schedule clause takes two parameters. First one is the kind of schedule you want to be implemented and the second one is the chunk size. So there are basically five kinds of uh, schedule you can implement in OpenMP. First one is static, dynamic, then guided, auto and runtime. So first we will see the static one. In static one, the iterations are divided into chunks of size, chunk size, and chunks are assigned to the thread in a team in round robin fashion. So basically, you are giving some chunk size, and according to that chunk size, each thread will get that amount of iterations for its execution in round robin fashion. In dynamic, each thread is executing a chunk of iteration and then request for another chunk. So basically, the difference between the static and dynamic is that uh, in dynamic after a particular thread has completed its execution of a thread uh, its execution of that particular iterations he can take the uh, he can be assigned with a new value of chunk size okay so that is particular difference between the two the so static and the dynamic both has its, its advantage and disadvantage then the next one is guided in guided it is similar to dynamic that uh, each thread is executing a chunk and then request for another chunk after its execution. But the only difference is the guided start with a large chunk size initially and and then it goes shrinking from largest chunk size to the smallest chunk size as it gets executed. And the next one is auto. Auto, auto scheduling means the sh compiler itself will decide at runtime which type of scheduling to be used. And then the last one is the runtime. It is actually the run schedule variable ICV, which is there in your JNCC compiler. Uh, in that variable, it is basically uh, statically defined what will be the ch what should be the chunk size. So according to that, the chunk size and the schedule will be decided. So let's see the practical implementation of this in the OpenMP. So I have used code block uh, for executing these codes. You can use any any kind of software. So basically, this is a scheduled program I will show you. So I have done here simple array multiplication and addition of those elements after multiplication. So let's see. So we need to include hashing uh, this library of omp.h for uh, implementing the OpenMP libraries. This is actually including the OpenMP library. Then you are here, I have defined the size 1 lakh. Uh, one lakh size for our array okay then i have defined here uh, basically the three arrays uh, a array b array and c is the uh, obviously the resulting array initially the sum is equals to zero then i have initialized these arrays actually to some values here then here here is the main thing the hash pragma omb4 and then I have used schedule static 10. So 10 is a size, it is a chunk size I have declared here. So then 
the for loop i is equals to one i less than size and i plus plus here actually the computation has been performed that is the array multiplication has been performed and whatever the result resultant array is there each element has been added to the sum variable and finally we have printed the sum here so let's execute this program and see the output of this program so first i will build and run this program you can see the sum is very large here and you can see here the execution time it's 0.039 second now let's see the same thing with the dynamic one click here and then main.c we'll see here schedule dynamic everything is same here the chunks are uh, the size of array is same the same initialization is the only thing different is this schedule dynamic even if it doesn't specify the chunk size so by default value will get executed here so in dynamic you can see here again it is a array multiplication and then we have printed the sum so let's execute this dynamic one first you need to select this dynamic and then you need to execute this project now 0 0.094 so you see that the dynamic takes more time than static why well, this has happened there are a couple of reasons for this the first reason is that as i told you the dynamic scheduling after each uh, thread has executed its thread it gets the new chunk for its execution means if it executes one chunk so it asks for another chunk so this is overhead, overhead actually after completion of first chunk he waits the thread stops its execution and waits for next chunk to be assigned to it so that's overhead is there with the dynamic one so that's why there is overhead so that's why you are seeing the difference that the static one is getting executed in a less time than the dynamic there is a third type of scheduling as well uh, as i told you that is guided let's see guided how it works in guided also the same program is there only hash pragma mp4 schedule and guided i have written here so let's execute this one first i will close this and then i will execute this one you can see this 0.038 it is similar to static or sometimes even it takes less time as well so guided should use a better result than the dynamic and the best one is i think static has been has been in this case so what we can conclude from all of this so we can conclude in a simple way let's conclude these are the particular things we can conclude from this all presentation that open mp is automatically split the for loop for us and depending on our program the default behavior may may not be ideal okay so the hash pragma mp4 parallel for with the help of this directive our number of iterations of loops are automatically get splitted and these are assigned to number of threads and chunk size are different according to the scheduling algorithm are used then for loop where each iteration take roughly equal time static schedule work best as they have little overhead as i told you statically whatever we are assigning the values each iteration if it is taking the same amount of time obviously static will be best otherwise if each iteration can take very different amount of time dynamic schedule works better uh, suppose one one thread works uh, executes the chunk then it asks for another so basically it works faster if uh, each iteration is taking different amount of time but there is a problem of overhead with the dynamic as well so that you can overcome with the help of guided scheduling by specifying a chunk size or using guided scheduling the trade-off between the two of the stat two of the scheduling algo uh, scheduling techniques you can differentiate if you use guided you get better performance and choosing the best scheduling depends on understanding of your loop obviously all of this again depends on your data whether the size of your data size of your array is smaller one larger one or what type of computations you are performing inside that particular loops so understanding your loop is very important in our case so thanks for watching the video 
if you like the video you can hit the like button please subscribe to the channel and if you have any doubts please write in the comment section below thank you